Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and keep watching more details. Todd and Julie Chrysler's oral arguments make misconduct claims. Attorneys for Todd and Julie Chrisley concluded their oral arguments on Friday, April 19. Several members of the Chrisley family were in attendance as the attorneys presented more details of the case. Keep reading to learn more about the claims of misconduct and whether or not Todd and Julie Chrisley have a chance to be released early. The Chrysler's attorney presents oral arguments. The Chrysler's and their attorneys started the appeals process immediately after the couple was sentenced in November 2022 for fraud and tax evasion. Now, nearly a year and a half later, they have concluded presenting their oral arguments. Neither Todd nor Julie Chrysler were present in the courtroom for the hearing. However, several members of their family were in the crowd. Savannah Chrysler, Chase Chrysler, Grayson Chrysler, and Nanny Faye Chrysler were all in the Atlanta courtroom on Friday. Savannah's boyfriend, Robert Schriever, was also in attendance. Alex Little made an argument that there was misconduct at play in the case. He said that the evidence suggested that the prosecutors here worked in concert with the witness. First, the issue that was discussed that came out in the redirect, and then the recross of Officer Betty Carter was whether the Chrysler's had paid taxes in the post-conspiracy period. He presented to the court. Then Little proceeded to say that the district court confirmed that there would be a potential prejudicial effect on the defendants leading the jury to believe that they had not paid their taxes, that they weren't interested in paying taxes, that they were untruth type of person who could commit fraud charge in the other acts. He argued that the effect of that prejudice spilled over to all of the charges in the case when it comes to the taxes that the Chrisley knows best couple owed. Alex Little argued that they paid everything before trial. Additionally, the government is not claiming that the taxes haven't been paid. The IRS didn't know what they were doing. The left hand didn't know what the right hand was doing, Little said in the courtroom on Friday. He went on to say that in the IRS system you can see both taxpayers, and you can see that there's a large sum sitting for Todd Chrisley that has not been applied to the joint return with Julie Chrisley. Alex Little continued, saying that Officer Betty Carter neglected to look further into the system. Todd and Julie Chrisley's future is still uncertain. Analyze Peters, a rep of the U.S. Attorney's Offices, had a different story to tell. She argued that there is no case for appeal at all. The evidence was overwhelming at trial that the Chrysler's had taken a number of steps to evade the IRS, and they conspired to evade the IRS, she concluded. Todd and Julie Chrysler initially reported to prison to serve their sentences in January 2023. While their sentences have already been reduced, the family is hoping they will be released altogether soon. Before the oral arguments were presented in courts, Ravana Chrisley opened up on her podcast about the situation. Once again, like, super grateful for that. That there are other avenues due to how our trial played out that we could take to get a new trial or to, you know, just hopefully get them out early. She said on the April 16 episode of her Unlocked podcast. So when it comes to the appeal, that's kind of where we're at. The courtroom was abuzz with tension as Todd and Julie Chrisley walked in hand in hand. Their trademark Southern charm. A stark contrast to the grim expressions on their faces, the air was heavy with anticipation. This wasn't just another appeal hearing it was a battle for their freedom and a chance to clear their tarnished reputations. Todd adjusted his tie, glancing at Julie, who gave him a reassuring nod. Their legal team had spent months preparing for this day, meticulously piecing together their defense. But it was just about facts and legal precedents. This was personal. They were here to argue that their conviction for bank fraud and tax evasion was just a miscarriage of justice but the result of misconduct. As the judge entered, everyone rose. The Chrysler's exchanged a glance, silently stealing themselves for what was to come. Once seated, Todd's lawyer, an imposing figure with a commanding presence, stood and began his argument. Your Honor, we are here today because my clients, Todd and Julie Chrysler, were not afforded a fair trial. This isn't just about errors in judgment or mistakes in the interpretation of the law. We are talking about deliberate misconduct that undermines the very foundation of justice. A murmur rippled through the courtroom. Todd leaned in closer to Julie, whispering something that made her lips twitch into a brief smile. It was a fleeting moment of levity in an otherwise serious atmosphere. The lawyer continued, detailing the allegations of prosecutorial misconduct. He spoke of withheld evidence ice witnesses, and a climate of prejudice that painted the Chrysler's as guilty before the trial even began. The prosecution star witness, the lawyer said, facing the courtroom, was an individual with a clear vendetta against my clients. Emails that could have exonerated. The Chrysler's were conveniently excluded from discovery. And perhaps most egregiously, 
there were clear indications that members of the jury were influenced by external factors. Julie's expression remained calm, but her tightly clasped hands betrayed her nerves. Todd, ever the showman, couldn't resist a dramatic head shake, his disapproval palpable. The prosecutor, a sharp-dressed woman with a no-nonsense demeanor, rose to counter. Your Honor, the claims of misconduct are baseless. The evidence against the chrysalis was overwhelming and meticulously vetted. To suggest otherwise is an affront to the integrity of this court and the judicial system as a whole. She paused, allowing her words to sink in. The judge nodded slightly, signaling her to continue. The chrysalis lived a life of luxury built on deceit, she said, her voice steady. They falsified documents, manipulated banks, and evaded their tax obligations. Their charm and celebrity status cannot overshadow the facts. The chrysalis lawyer was quick to rebut, diving into specifics. He pointed to inconsistencies in the prosecution's timeline, contradictions in witness testimonies, and a general lack of transparency. As the back and forth continued, I couldn't help but interject. Your Honor, if I may, he said, standing abruptly. The judge raised an eyebrow. Mr. Chrisley, you are represented by counsel. It would be wise to let them speak for you. Todd hesitated, then nodded, sitting back down. But the interruption had its effect. All eyes were on him now, and he made sure to wear an expression of righteous indignation. Julie reached over, placing a hand on his knee, a silent plea for him to keep his composure. Their lawyer seized the moment, pivoting to address the human element of the case. Your Honor, my clients are not perfect. They've made mistakes, as we all have. But the question before us is not whether they are flawed individuals. It is whether they received a fair trial, and the evidence overwhelmingly suggests they did not. The judge leaned forward, resting his chin on his hand. Counsel, you've made serious allegations of misconduct. Do you have concrete proof to back these claims? With a flourish, the lawyer produced a stack of documents, submitting them to the court. These emails, Your Honor, were obtained through a whistleblower who came forward after the trial. They show clear communication between the prosecution and a key witness outlining a narrative designed to secure a conviction rather than uncover the truth. The courtroom erupted in murmurs again. The prosecutor looked visibly rattled but quickly composed herself. These emails, Your Honor, are out of context and do not change the overwhelming evidence of guilt. The judge silenced the room with a sharp rap of his gavel. Order. I will review these documents before making any determinations. As the arguments wrapped up, the Chrysler's lawyer made a passionate closing statement. This case is not just about Todd and Julie Chrisley. It's about the integrity of our justice system. If we allow misconduct to go unchecked, if we prioritize convictions over truth, we erode the very foundation of our society. When it was the prosecutor's turn, she delivered her rebuttal with equal fervor. Justice is not about theatrics or sensationalism. It's about accountability. The chrysalis were found guilty because the evidence proved their guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. To overturn their conviction based on unsubstantiated claims would set a dangerous precedent. The judge adjourned the court, promising to review the arguments and evidence carefully before rendering a decision. Todd and Julie exited the courtroom to a swarm of reporters. Todd, how do you feel about today's proceedings? One shouted. Todd flashed his signature grin, though it didn't quite reach his eyes. We believe in the truth, and we're confident it will prevail. Julie, ever the poised southern bell added, we just want fairness. That's all we're asking for. As they climbed into their waiting car, the weight of the day's events settled over them. For Todd and Julie Chrisley, the fight was far from over. But for the first time in a long time, they felt a glimmer of hope. Whether the court would validate their claims of misconduct or uphold the original conviction was a question that loomed over them. But one thing was certain they weren't going down without a fight. Their journey from reality TV stars to convicted felons had been a roller coaster, and this courtroom drama was yet another chapter in their tumultuous saga. As their car disappeared into the city's bustling streets, the chrysalis held on to the one thing they still had each other, and for now, that would have to be enough.